Well, we finally know what killed the Aztecs. Around 500 years ago, the once flourishing Aztec Empire suddenly collapsed. A total of about 15 million people, from brave warriors to successful farmers and tradesmen, and everyone in between, mysteriously died one by one. Who or what killed them? Was it the Spaniards, or perhaps some terrible epidemic? Scientists believe that the latter of the two might have been the culprit, and it looks like they've finally found exactly what brought on this civilization-destroying disease. Watch this video to find out how it came about and to learn some interesting facts about the Aztecs that you might not have known. Plus, we've got a little game for you. Keep an eye out for the four little light bulbs hidden throughout this video. Why light bulbs? Because it's our symbol here at Brightside, of course. As soon as you've found them all, let us know in the comments. The first attentive viewer will be featured in one of our next videos. Good luck! Now, back to the Aztecs. In the middle of the 16th century, these people started dying in large numbers due to what is known as the coco Leastly epidemic, which hit in two waves. The first one was in 1545, and the second in 1576. As with all diseases, this one had incredibly unpleasant symptoms, the scariest of which included uncontrollable vomiting, profuse bleeding from the eyes, nose, and mouth, and swollen painful masses around the ears and neck. Sorry for those of you who have just sat down to a meal. In the end, as you can imagine, this disease had a very small survival rate. Scientists have always had several theories as to what caused this mass dying. It might have been the plague, typhoid fever, measles, the flu, or a whole slew of other infections. Well, it looks like they finally found the answer in their most recent research, the results of which were published in the Nature Ecology and Evolution Journal. Molecular paleopathologist Kirsten Bose and her team analyzed DNA extracted from the teeth of Aztec remains buried in what is now southern Mexico. They worked with 29 human skeletons, using the latest scientific research methods, and they found traces of the Salmonella enterica bacteria. Now, we've all heard of Salmonella, the bacteria known for causing food poisoning. Nowadays, it takes most people 4 to 7 days to recover from it on their own. But in Aztec times, things were quite different. As we know, this bacterium enters our bodies from contaminated food and water and mostly affects the gut. But finding it in their teeth means that it was spreading throughout their bodies and into their bloodstream. Who would have thought that something we don't really give a second thought to today could be powerful enough to take down an entire empire? Now, how did that Salmonella even get there? One major version is that it was one of the gifts the Europeans brought to the New World. So when we suggested it was the Spaniards who killed the Aztecs, we weren't far off, really. The diseases they and other Europeans carried across the ocean gave rise to some of the most devastating epidemics ever. The Coco Leastly one we're talking about spread all over central Mexico and Guatemala, and even reached Peru. However, some scientists believe the bacterium was born in the land of the Aztecs, and the Europeans themselves didn't know how to cure it, so they got infected too. How about we give the scientists more time to decide who's to blame for the spread of Salmonella and Terica, and if it was the only cause of the empire's destruction? For now, we'll occupy ourselves with some interesting facts about the people who gave the world chocolate. No, we're not talking about Hershey. We're talking about the first people to discover this wonderful delight, the Aztecs. We're definitely grateful to them for satisfying our sweet tooth. Hit the thumbs up if you are too. Counting down from number 10, the name. We know them as the Aztecs, but this isn't exactly their original name. It was coined by the arriving Europeans and probably inspired by a place called Aztlan in northern Mexico. The Aztecs called themselves Mexica, and that name later became the name of the country Mexico. Number 9, the original basketballers. The Aztecs kind of pre-invented basketball or at least a ball game that looks a lot like the basketball we know today. Their game was called, bear with me here, my Aztec is a little rusty, Ulama Istli. 
They used a rubber ball, which was pretty revolutionary for that period of time, and played on a special ground called a tlachtli. Players were supposed to throw the ball through a small stone ring – okay, sounds like basketball – or Quidditch – and were only allowed to touch it with their head, elbows, knees, and hips. Okay, definitely not basketball. Also, an important rule was that the ball couldn't hit the ground. So basically, it was basketball on steroids. <laughs> gotcha. Number 8. Interesting calendar. The Aztecs used a solar calendar with 365 days in a year. Okay, doesn't sound like a very interesting calendar, does it? But wait, there's more. This calendar was broken into 18 months, lasting 20 days each. If you crunch the numbers, 20 times 18 gives us 360. So, what happened to the rest of the year? Those extra 5 days at the end of the year were something like 5 Friday the 13th in a row. In other words, they believed those days were super unlucky. Can you imagine trying to get through 5 unlucky days in a row? I'd just lock myself in my house and binge wash my shows. Number 7. Unique Slavery System The Aztecs not only had a special calendar, but also a unique system of slavery. Poor people could sell their kids or even themselves into slavery. The money they got in that deal, plus their potential earnings for their hard work, gave them a chance to buy back their freedom. Or they could try to run away, walk into a holy temple, and automatically lose their property status. Sounds to me like the adult version of, can't touch me, I'm safe. But even staying a slave didn't equal a life full of endless suffering. Slaves could get married, have families and property, and, wait for it, buy their own slaves. Whoa, it's kind of like slaveception. Plus, to top it all off, kids born into slave families didn't automatically become property of the slave owner. If there were any way to make the atrocious practice of slavery moral in any kind of way, it sounds like the Aztecs might have achieved that. Number 6. Polygamy Speaking of family, Polygamy, as long as it abided by some strict rules, was allowed to Aztec men. They could have only one marriage ceremony with the first primary wife. However, the other wives were also mentioned in the official records and were supposed to be treated with just as much respect as the main wife. A family with more than one wife was wealthy and usually belonged to high society. Divorces weren't allowed, but the punishment for adultery was death. Wow, the Aztecs didn't mess around when it came to cheating. Now, how many light bulbs have you seen so far? Remember, they may be hidden anywhere. Now, let's get back to the video. Number 5. Keeping records Nahuatl was the official language of the Aztecs, and based on my terrible pronunciation of all these words, I should seriously consider taking up a course in it. No. This language consisted of an alphabet made up of pictures, kind of like hieroglyphs. Their writing materials were bark or deerskin, and they used charcoal as a pen. The Aztecs left behind detailed records on their religious sacrifices, important events, and even taxes. Number 4. Arts and Crafts The Aztecs may have killed a lot of people, but that doesn't mean they were just a bunch of stupid barbarians. They made amazing art. Granted, it was mostly a way of paying tribute to the gods, but talent is talent. They enjoyed pottery as well and carved sculptures and huge idols out of stone to place inside temples. Their working materials included jade, obsidian, and quartz, all of which served to create pretty realistic-looking figures of people and animals. Warrior art was a special art form too. The Aztecs decorated their brave soldiers with certain tattoos that displayed their accomplishments on the battlefield. And finally, the Aztecs even wrote poetry. Number 3. Compulsory Schooling More proof that the Aztecs cared about the arts and education is shown in their compulsory public schooling system. Kids from richer noble families studied history, astronomy, art, government, and leadership. Kids from the lower caste went to a different school to learn all the skills a future warrior would need. Girls studied in separate schools, and their lessons were mostly about cooking, weaving, and other domestic skills. Number 2. Their capital The Aztecs' main city was located in the middle of a lake, called Tenochtitlan, and home to a whopping 200,000 residents. 
It was larger than most cities in Europe at the time. They even had garbage collectors to keep the city super clean. The lake where it used to stand is mostly dry land today, and Mexico City is located there now. And number 1. Chocolate! Finally the moment we've all been waiting for. What do the Aztecs have to do with chocolate? They graciously shared it with the rest of the world, and they did it in a pretty funny way. They mistook Herman Cortez, a Spanish conquistador, for a local god, who had once left but promised to come back. Cortez appeared in the exact same spot the god had been expected to return. Montezuma, the Aztec leader, presented Cortez with a cup of cocoa and a whole plantation of it. This is how the Spanish people learned the secret of chocolate. See? Even the word chocolate as we know and love it today was derived from the Aztec language. Mmm, now I want a piping cup of hot chocolate. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two about history. Hit the thumbs up if you learned something cool today. Did you manage to find all five bulbs we mentioned in the beginning? Please share in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be the first to see our updates. And remember, life is better on the bright side. Bright side.